let's address this because I know we're going to have some Bama fans saying, well, Matt, where's Alabama? Bama's not in the top 12. And listen up, buddy. Alabama ain't even sniffing my top 12. Let me put it to you like this. Alabama ain't even in the realm and atmosphere. They weren't even in consideration. Man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what today is, and you know what video this is. It's time for me to take a look at the AP poll. I'm going to give you guys my live reaction, and I have no idea what to expect, especially when it comes to Alabama. They are going to drop. As to how far they're going to drop in these rankings, I guess we're going to have to wait and see, and we're going to find out in just a second. These rankings are released on Sunday, but like always, I save my live reaction for this video, and I'm also going to give you guys my new and improved MBG poll. We got a lot of movement in my poll, and there's a team I've jumped into the top 10 that might just shock you. I'm ready to see these rankings, so without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Just like I expected, coming in hot at number 25. We have Vanderbilt. Ah, oh, yes. Good old Vandy. It seems like I can't escape them. And they're a reason I had to change my name on Instagram and Twitter to Matt B. Diddy. On the bright side, at least Alabama has two quality road losses against two top 25 teams. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic when I say that, but we all know the committee is somehow, someway going to try to find a way to sneak Alabama in the playoffs. Shout out to Vanderbilt, though. They deserve it, and I'm happy for that fan base. At 24 and 23, we got Navy and Army, and the reason Vanderbilt went up is because Michigan lost. Michigan will probably not return to the top 25 this season and then we got mizzou they won beat auburn but they dropped to 21 20 through 16 nothing really to look at here boise state did drop a couple spots Ole miss stays the same and k-state goes up one and here it is what everybody was looking forward to alabama they are ranked 15th in the nation that is the lowest i believe they've been ranked since i think 2010 i could be wrong with that but i'm pretty sure because that's the year that alabama lost i think it was two or three games in the regular season i pride myself on being a college football analyst first a bama fan second but as a bama fan no complaints here you reap what you sow i think 15 is a pretty good spot for bama and i don't see too many people getting upset about that at 14 we got a and they didn't move they are quietly 4-0 in the sec and 13 this is a team I'm really high on. Indiana. Shout out to Kurt Sinetti. He's got them boys looking insane. They beat Nebraska by 50 burger. 50. Unreal. We got Notre Dame staying the same at number 12. And we got BYU after that close, and I mean close win, going up to 11. Iowa State, another close win in the Big 12. They dropped from 9 to 10. This is a team I've been telling people to watch out for the past three or four weeks. Clemson. At number 8, we got LSU. And then at number 7, they just replaced Bama. We got good old Tennessee. Shout to Rocky Tap. At number 6, Miami does not move. Let's get into the top 5. And that means Texas remains in the top 5 because we haven't seen them. Yep, there we go. Texas number 5. B. Little bro, Ohio State at number four, Penn State at number three. They don't move. Georgia goes up to number two, and the Oregon Duckies at number one. I have zero complaints with this AP poll, and I think that's the first time this year. There's nothing I can even nitpick at. Well, I say there's nothing to nitpick at. I talked about this last week, but I've just come to terms with reality. They're not going to move them. I don't understand how you can say Penn State is better than Ohio State. That doesn't sit right with me. I don't get that, and since we already talked about it, there's no need to overreact again this week because neither of the teams move. And on the grand scheme and things, doesn't really matter because don't... Does Penn State and Ohio State play each other this weekend? Or is it, no, 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 that's next week. That's going to resolve itself, so yeah, I'm not even going to put energy into that debate. But yeah, that's the top 25, and without further ado, let's get into the MBG poll. As always, if you want to see this poll before it gets posted on YouTube, you can follow my Twitter, feel free to do so. We have a great time over there, and we have an outstanding community over there as well. Shout out to all the Twitter people. Where I have some of these teams, it might shock you, but the reason I believe that my poll is more valuable and more important than the AP poll is because I explain to you where I have each team. The AP poll doesn't explain it. I'm going to do just that. At number 12, I got Notre Dame. Nothing to be said there. They've been solid outside of the Northern Illinois loss. At number 11, I didn't move them up in my rankings. I got Tennessee. That is lower than the AP poll, but come on, man. Let's not act like Tennessee played a good football game against Alabama. That was a bad game from both teams and both parties. Tennessee missed two field goals, had three turnovers in the first half, and still won the game. I'm not trying to discredit Tennessee, but anybody with two functional brain cells know Tennessee didn't play good. They didn't look good against Bama, they didn't look good against Florida, and they didn't look good against Arkansas. However, these last two weeks, they're finding a way to win, and that's got to account for something, so I got them at 11. Their offense still looks awful. They got a lot to work on. The defense, though, one of the best in the nation. At number 10, I got A&M. That's where I had them last week, so nothing to be said about that. At number 9, this is the big one, and none of you can even guess who I'm about to have here. I got Indiana. Yeah, that's right. I got Indiana. And I know some of you are sitting there going, Matt, 
What the crap, man? Indiana? Is this basketball? No, my friend, it is not. This is football. And you want to know why I got Indiana number nine? It's for one simple reason, my friend. Did you watch the game against Nebraska? That's all I need to say. Watch the Nebraska game. And oh, yeah, got to throw in there. They're undefeated. Kurt Sinetti's a winner. That's all he does is win. And here's a fun fact for you. You know Kurt Sinetti was on Nick Saban's coaching staff early on in the early days of the Alabama dynasty? He has that Nick Saban personality, and he knows what it takes to rebuild and turn around a program. That guy's legit, and he's got those guys, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, playing out of their minds. Indiana also has a legit Heisman contending quarterback that's not getting a lot of love because it's Indiana. But I'm telling you right now, if Indiana continues to win games... He might sneak his way into that conversation. To beat Dylan Ravioli in Nebraska by 50, that was the biggest shocker of the weekend to me. Even more shocking than Georgia just pounding Quinn Ewers in Texas. If you don't understand the Indiana hype, you just gotta watch their games. They're legit. At number eight, I got LSU. They go up because Bama loses. And at number seven, I've been high on the scene the past couple weeks. Been trying to tell people, been trying to warn you. I got the Clemson Tigers. Clemson looks really good, man. I'm liking that team. At number six, they don't move. I got Penn State. You can tell I'm not as high on Penn State. I'm not, but I still think they're a really good football team. I like Drew Lauer, especially in that USC game, how they were passing the ball more. I think Penn State is a legit playoff contender. But with that being said, I don't think they're better than some of our teams I have ahead of them. At number five, all they do is win. Yes, they're continuing to play with fire. Yes, I think eventually they'll get burnt. I got Miami. Nobody's going to complain with that. As long as they keep winning, yeah, I mean, you got to give them some respect. They will drop one eventually. It's just going to happen. Like my grandfather always told me, he said, Matthew, you keep playing with fire, son. You're going to get burnt. And guess what? I got burnt. I didn't get burnt that day. I didn't get burnt that week, that month, but it was months later. Same thing for Miami. Their defense is booty cheeks, and if you want to compete for a national championship, you got to have a semi-decent defense. Cam Ward and that offense isn't always going to score 40 every single week. At number four, I got Texas. Here's my message to everyone out there, and I know we do this. I even do it as an analyst myself. Try not to overreact and try not to have a knee-jerk reaction. It's just one game. Remember how Alabama just destroyed and pounded Georgia and what everybody do? They wrote off Georgia said, oh, yeah, they're not as good. Well, look where we're at now. It's just one game. This is the new college football. You never know what's going to happen. I still like this Texas team. I'm still high on their defense, and I think Quinn years in the offense will turn around. It's more so of... Sometimes in this life, and I know people, it's not the first reaction, but I think you got to do this. You got to tip your cap to your opponent and say, you know what? That man, he was better than me today. And that's what happened with Texas and Georgia. Texas ran into a competitor that was better than them. And sometimes it's not because you're bad. It's just because they're good and you got to clap it up to them. That game to me told me more about Georgia than it did about Texas. I'll get back to that in just a second. At number three, I got the little bro. Ohio State. They do not move my rankings at all. At number two, they don't move either. I got Oregon. Yeah, so you know what that means. At number one, returning to the number one spot, claiming their number one spot, I got the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, that's right. Maybe controversial, but to me, it's not controversial. It wasn't even close. They're the best team in the country. And I already know what people are going to say. Well, Matt, Oregon has two solid wins. They beat Boise State Nash and Genty, and it's not like they blew them out of the water. They won by three points, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'm 99% sure on that. And the other one, well, Matt, not only did they beat Boise State, they beat Ohio State. And yes, they did, but it was by one single point. I'm not trying to discredit those wins. Oregon looks really good, and it's why you didn't see me complain about the AP poll having at number one, because I don't mind if you have Oregon at number one. I just don't. And it's not to the point where if you put Oregon at one, I'd get upset with it, because I wouldn't be. But for me, I got Georgia at one. They are back to their old self. It took them a while to get things going, and still, unbelievably, Carson Beck has that turnover problem. And maybe that's just who he is. I don't think he's going to continue to throw two or three interceptions per game the remainder of the season, and that's just scare teams because he had zero touchdowns and three INTs against Texas, and they won by 15. The final score is not even an indication that really blew him out, but if that offense for Georgia, more importantly, Quinn Ewers, can start taking care of the ball a little bit better, they are, without a shadow of a doubt, in my mind, the best team in the nation. I like Oregon, but their defense, it concerns me. Georgia's defense, nah. They're back to clicking on all cylinders. Still don't know what happened in that first half against Alabama because when you look at Bama now, I mean, they're abysmal on offense. But outside that first half against Bama, they dominated Bama in the second half. And I know they struggled with Mississippi State, but they still won that game by double digits. I think Georgia's better in Oregon. That's what it comes down to for me. And here's the reality of it. Who's more deserving of the number one spot? 
Oregon. They are. And I feel bad for Oregon fans because I would love to put you at number one, but I don't believe you're better than Georgia currently. You deserve that number one spot, but I can't give it to you. And let me explain a little bit more on these rankings. I do take winning all your games into account when I evaluate these teams. It's a combination of multiple different things, like who's more deserving, how did you look in your games, have you won all your games, how many games have you lost, and the list goes on and on and on. But when you only have, in this case, an example, one loss against Alabama, and we know Alabama that's a hard place to win at, you lost by seven points, and you played awful in the first half, I'm not going to hold that, or I try not to hold that against any team. If Georgia would have lost that Bama game by 30, oh yeah, most certainly I'm having Oregon number one. But the fact that came back in that game and took the lead showed me a lot about that team. So that's why I have Georgia at number one. Let's address this, because I know we're going to have some Bama fans saying, well, Matt, where's Alabama? Bama's not in the top 12. And listen up, buddy. Alabama ain't even sniffing my top 12. Let me put it to you like this. Alabama ain't even in the realm and atmosphere. They weren't even in consideration. I knew some people were going to be curious about that since I don't do an entire top 25, but all you need to know is you ain't even close to the top 12. I'm not going to turn this into an Alabama rant video, but Bama's got bigger fish to fry than worrying about where they're ranked. They need to worry about playing some dang football. I'm curious though. Let me know your thoughts down below, but there